Okay, so here we have my two hermit crabs. This is SpongeBob and Gunner. SpongeBob is the bigger one, Gunner is the little one. Oh my goodness, Gunner just hopped out of his brown shell and jumped into this bigger white one beside him. He's been in this brown shell for over a year, so that's crazy. I wonder if he'll stay in there or if he'll go back. I guess time will tell. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a video all about my pros and cons for owning hermit crabs. Essentially, a video of things I wish I knew before I got my hermit crabs. As you guys know, I've had my hermit crabs for over eight to nine years, and while I've had them a very long time, there are a lot of things that I wish I knew before I had gotten them. It's gonna be very similar to the things I wish I knew before I had a Pac-Man frog video. If you guys haven't seen that video, I will link it for you down in the description as usual. If you guys enjoyed this video on hermit crabs, don't forget to subscribe down below. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing on my list for cons, if you will, or things I wish I knew before I got my hermit crabs, is that the majority of hermit crabs that you see for sale in stores are all wild caught. If you've ever researched hermit crabs and where they come from, then you know that land hermit crabs and even saltwater hermit crabs that you buy are all wild caught. They come from the beach or the surrounding shores of the beach. They are captured from the wild. They are typically taken back. They're usually in very horrible conditions. They are forced into painted shells. They're usually really stressed out and then they are shipped off to pet stores to be sold as pets. It's a horrible industry. I wish I would have known about it eight plus years ago whenever I got my crab. However, I was only recently made aware of this in the last couple years, but it's definitely something I wish I would have known. And had I known eight plus years ago before I got my crabs that they were wild caught, I may not have gotten them. Wild caught animals are something I definitely don't approve of, whether it's hermit crab or lizards or turtles or anything else. So it's definitely something I wish I would have known. My second thing that I wish I knew is that they can live up to 30 years. When I first got my hermit crabs, I had no idea that they could live up to 30 years. Now I've had my crabs over eight to nine years and I have lost one that passed away last year. As you guys know, Princess did pass away. She was my biggest crab that I had, but she was older. No, she was nowhere near 30. She was probably more around 12 to 15, but I did have her for a very long time. But again, that's something that I wasn't aware of whenever I got them. I had no clue that they had such long lifespans if taken care of properly. Of course, the majority of hermit crabs that are sold in pet stores usually don't see one year in captivity. They stress so easily. People are usually uneducated on their care, so they typically do pass away and they don't live anywhere close to the 30 year max that they can. But that is something interesting to mention and I do wish I would have known that before I got them. The third thing I wish I knew before I got hermit crabs is that calcium sand is actually horrible for them. When I got my hermit crabs originally, I had half of their tank calcium sand and half of it eco earth. I had no idea how harmful calcium sand actually is. I didn't know that once it got wet, it can actually harden up in their shells and it can clog their gills, which they use to breathe, and it can actually kill them. Calcium sand is well known in the pet community as being something that is somewhat toxic because it can harden and it is very dangerous and can cause impaction in different reptiles and animals. There are a few pet tubers I know that still kind of push calcium sand or still use it with their animals, but I do believe it is an extremely outdated thing and no one should be using it for any animals whatsoever. Depending on the type of species you have, if you must use sand, always use play sand and just completely stay away from those colored and calcium sands altogether. The fourth thing that I wish I knew before I got hermit crabs is how neglected they really are. Now granted, I've taken really good care of my hermit crabs, or at least to the best of my ability since I got them, which I attribute as to why they've lived so long, but I had no idea the mass amounts of hermit crabs that die every year after they're taken from the wild and then they're stressed out and then they're given to people with improper care. I tell you, I don't know the exact number but I feel like if I had the exact number of how many hermit crabs die every day, it would probably be shocking and it would probably make no one ever buy them again. Like if they just put the actual number of how many wild caught hermit crabs die every year on the front of the tanks at like Petco and PetSmart, I bet you everyone would think twice before buying them and would probably be sickened and not purchase them. It is really sad and it's really unfortunate. That's why I advocate for people to not buy hermit crabs if you really, really want them. I do encourage you to go online because there are tons on Craigslist always needing homes. And 
honestly, the same goes for saltwater crabs, Halloween crabs, and those types of things. All of those animals are wild caught as well. Yes, they're a different type of crab. They're not necessarily land crabs, or maybe they are saltwater crabs, but the same principle still applies. They can still get stressed out. They still molt. They still need shells and all these things. And unfortunately, their deaths are still pretty high. I definitely think that land hermit crab mortality rates are much higher than, say, saltwater crabs. And also, saltwater crabs are much less common because they do require such extravagant setup. But again, that is something that I wish I knew before I got my hermit crabs. The fifth thing that I wish I knew before I got hermit crabs is how easily they can pass away. Now, when I got my hermit crabs, I actually didn't know anything about their lifespan. So if I had one pass away, of course, as a kid, I always assumed that they were sick or something. You really don't think about it. I'm sure most kids don't think about it. But what I didn't realize as an adult when I had gotten my crabs all those years ago is how easily they stress and can pass away. Obviously, the further research that I did, the longer that I had them, I quickly realized that handling them is a big no-no. Taking them out daily is a big no-no. Touching them or removing them or digging them up whenever they are buried or molting, again, is a huge no-no because they stress so easily that the stress can actually kill them. I did learn this pretty quickly after getting them, but again, that's something that I wish I knew before I got them. So I would say those are most of the negative things that I wish I knew before I got them, but now I'm gonna talk about some pros to having hermit crabs. Obviously, hermit crabs are really fun to have and they're not all bad, so there are definitely some pros to having them. Again, this is not encouraging you to go out and buy them, but if you were wanting to own them, I do recommend adopting them. Number one, once you have the proper care down and your enclosure is completely sat up perfectly for them to thrive in, they're actually pretty easy to care for. You just change out their food and waters daily, mist down their tank, and make sure that they're getting plenty of fruits and vegetables, and that's pretty much it. They're relatively easy as long as you're paying attention to them daily, and you're just making sure that all of their needs are met. My pro number two is they actually have a fairly simple diet. They don't require anything live like crickets or worms or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about bugs or anything like you would with, say, crested geckos or my Pac-Man frog or my turtle. As long as you give them plenty of fruits and veggies and a well varied diet so that they have lots of things to choose from and lots of variety and make sure that all of their dietary needs are met with what you're feeding them whether it be with fruits vegetables eggshells a little bit of calcium powder or maybe a cuddle bone and plenty of protein as long as all of their dietary needs are met you will have a happy crab the next pro to owning hermit crabs in my opinion is that they are really fun little animals to have it's really interesting to have their tank set up and you can watch them explore, you can watch them eat, you can watch them soak, you can watch them walk around. They love to climb, so the more climbing things they have, it's so interesting to watch them. They really do have big personalities for such a small little crustacean, so it's really interesting to watch them explore their tank, especially after you've cleaned it. It's really fun to watch them get really excited, just like Moo does. Whenever I clean Moo's tank, she always gets really excited and starts racing around. Well, surprisingly, hermit crabs even though they're technically crustaceans, they do the same thing. So I would say that's definitely one of the pros to owning them. And the last pro that's on my list that I have, which should not be a reason to get them in any way, shape, or form, but it's just something that I feel from owning them, is that having them gives you a little piece of the beach in your home. I love the beach. Every time I'm at the beach, there's tons of crabs around. You know, you always see them. Obviously, you don't see many hermit crabs or land crabs when you're at the beach, unless you're in certain areas where they are frequent. But I know that sometimes when I look over at my enclosure and I see them in there, it just reminds me of the beach and it just kind of gives you that feeling of having a little piece of the beach in your home. Obviously, like I said, it's devastating that they're wild caught and if I could go back, I would never have gotten them even though I've listed a ton of reasons why I love having them and I think that they're awesome pets to have. If I did make that decision all those years ago, I definitely wouldn't have bought them. I would have adopted them but regardless, it is something that I've noticed from having them that they're really interesting and I really love watching them. Okay guys, that is it for this video. I hope that you guys learned something new about hermit crabs. This has been all of my opinions on things I wish I knew before I got hermit crabs and also some things that I learned from having them. I hope that you guys found this video interesting. If you have hermit crabs and you've noticed any of these things to be true, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on hermit crabs and how much you love having them as pets. Obviously, as usual, this video is not encouraging anyone to go out and buy hermit crabs. However, if you have them or you've had them for a long time or you've rescued them or adopted them, I would love to hear about it and I strongly encourage that. If you guys enjoyed this video on hermit crabs, feel free to subscribe down below and give this video a like. I will see you guys in my next video. Be kind. Bye.